いやそういう意味では不快に感じたなら謝るよ Hello everybody and welcome to and welcome back to the channel. My name is Wilbur Parallax and today we are back with Corpse Body Book of Shadows. Um, so if you missed out on the last episode, we have, um, we're in Heavenly Coast, which is very nice considering the other chapters we have not been here fully. There was like, what, 20, 60 minutes? I think it was like two episodes, it was like about... Maybe it was about 40 minutes, I'll say around about 40 minutes. Um, in Corpse Party, the Corpse Party world in the last chapter. Um, but uh, we haven't been immersed in the um, world in a couple of um, hours, I would say, uh, video-wise. Um, so, but we're here and we've met a new cast of characters, the Byakudan high school students. And so if you know um, the significance, um, you might have watched the last series, you might not have, but there is a murderer amongst these students, um, which is not very uh, helpful in this sort of situation, but you know, you, you deal with what you can, so uh, we just have to deal with the murderer. Um, and so we're playing as a female um, student, Mitsuki. Um, and this is her friend slash guy who has a crush on her, Fukuroi, and he and her have brought a decapitated head back to this ghost, um, and it looks like it's not going so well for them, so let's continue and we'll see what happens. No, you think I'm wretched. You think I'm ugly and dirty. You don't ever want to touch my body again. Isn't that right? Fukuroi, I don't like where this is going. I, I agree. I think we need to distance ourselves from this place. It's because you're still alive. That's why you turn your noses at us dead people, arrogant creatures. Why don't you come and join us? I'm going to hand you over to the others, and they're scary. They're excruciatingly frightening. Where? Fukuroi? Fukuroi? Where are you? Maybe he's passed out somewhere. Oh, I know. I'll try lighting a candle. My surroundings were far different than I'd expected. I seemed to be in some sort of hallway underground. There was a chill in the air, both literally and figuratively. The smell that wafted about was both musty and gloomy somehow. Fukuroi, wake up. We're somewhere underground now, and it feels really dangerous. Come on, wake up. Damn it. Oh, he did. Mm, yep, there's the music. His eyes were wide open, but he gave no response. Looking a bit closer, I noticed that his neck had been severely twisted. He was staring right at me, but his body was facing the other direction. It's like an owl. <laughs> his like, head's turned the completely wrong way. And his half agape jaw was completely motionless. He wasn't breathing. No. No, this can't be happening. Come on, it's not funny. And then there were footsteps. 
Somebody's coming. What do I do? Um, assuming that we're already on the wrong end sort of path, we might as well just, like, get dead now. <sighs> it's a person. Maybe it's Kurosaki, Toko, or one of the others. Over here. I'm over here. Hurry. There's been an accident. The footsteps drew closer and closer, and then finally, the figure making them came into view. What? Uh, sorry. I thought you were, uh, I'm from Byakudan High School, grade 11. What the hell is wrong with me? Why am I introducing myself? This is clearly not someone in his right mind. My, my name is Mitsuki Yamamoto, and uh, my friend here has been gravely injured. <laughs> Go just run. <laughs> He's got an axe, or something, and he's covered in blood. He's... he's probably the guy who did this to Fukuroi. Oh, I can't stutter that much. We just kind of woke up in here, and uh, we didn't know where we were, and saw um, bodies all around us, and... <laughs> Yes, please. So, like, obviously you've got, like, the flight or fight response, right? But there's actually, like, a third one in there that doesn't get talked about as often as much. It's not even in the name of it. It's Freeze. And she's, she's obviously taken after that one. She, like, she hasn't run. She hasn't fought back. She's just gone, um, my name's Mitsuki. <laughs> run, you dolt. Run. Run, Mitsuki. Will you help me? That was expected. <laughs> ah, thank you. I don't think I needed that though to tell me that I had the wrong end. I think, um... We've had the wrong end since helping that ghost, though, so I'm gonna have to go back. Wait, so if I go into here and I go load game. Alright, so we'll see. Um. I don't think that's where I made the decision. I mean, we can change it if I have to. So I will just. What do we do? We need to find our friends, but this poor soul has had it a lot worse than we do. Right, so if I select, don't help him. No, we're just students. As much as I'd like to help him, I really don't think there's anything we can do. But Mitsuki... We can't. We don't even know what's going to happen to us in here. We just can't. I guess you're right. We should focus our energy on finding Kensuke and the others. Does he get angry? Oh, don't tell him that. I'm sorry. I don't think there's anything we can do for you right now. Once we get out of here, though, we'll send the police. So just sit tight until then. Wait, please. If you find my head, I swear I'll return the favor. Oh, okay, so he doesn't... Alright, well, let's just avoid you. Grab whatever... Oh, this was the wind-up thing, wasn't it? Get, get it. Yeah. Alright, we've read all of this before, so I'm just gonna skip past it. 
Okay, so we know that um, doing that was a bad idea. So what we're going to do is I feel like I don't know where to go from here. It's like, um, something said that, um, what if I go under here? Maybe there's something to do with where his head is that isn't in, like, doesn't involve, like, the actual picking up of the head. Why does there are numerous indoor use slippers stowed in the cubbies? They appear much more old fashioned than the ones commonly worn in modern day elementary school. What was that? It's really is a door. Decomposed human cranium occupies a massive and bit easy to fit, blah 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 blah. Ah, looking closely, something seems to have been shoved into his mouth. Look, there's something in there. Check it out. I can definitely see something in his mouth, but I I don't think I can, you know. Allow me. So like so manly. <laughs> definitely not a fan of maggots crawling all over me. So could we dug around inside the mouth of the severed head for a few moments, then finally withdrew his hand. He was gripping something tightly between his now foul-smelling, discolored, and dully glistening fingers. Here, I've got tissues. Yes! Ah, uh, thank you. It seems to be a key of some sort. After thoroughly wiping off all the maggots and bits of rotting flesh, the item Fukudoi produced from the head took on that classic look of an old copper key. Okay. So, we've got a couple of locked. That's not locked. I'm pretty sure. I thought it was, um, I can't remember, but I thought it was like, uh, the, the, the whole like, it's, it's like a wall, it doesn't move, or something like that. Okay, um, so we've got the art room as well. So while we're over here, we might as well try that one out. And then we, we still need to get the keys and stuff from the music room, which depending on where this key goes to, hopefully it leads to, um, the other rooms. So the door... The door is locked. I wonder if that key we found will work here. Alright, it's a match. Yay! Alright, so now we're going to here. It's weird because we've been around that like drop in the hallway and we still haven't found um what's his face? Um Kurosaki. There's a plaster model of a human arm on one of the shelves. Maybe it was used for sketching. The fingers are all stained red as if covered in blood. The hell is this? That doesn't look like paint, does it? Eee. We got no okay, so we'll just look at all the furniture bits. There are quite a lot of objects on these shelves and in these drawers, but every one of them is fixed in place as if they're all just decorative accents. Uh, same thing. Alright, now we'll look at the easels. It's faint and almost invisible from a distance, but there appears to be a painting of a white rose on this canvas. Or maybe it's just a water stain. 
It's a portrait of a girl with long black hair, but her face has become completely blotted out with red paint. It's a still life depicting hydra hydrangeas. There's a palette knife placed beneath the canvas. This seems like something we might be able to use. Take it! You never know when something like this might come in handy. Wide palette knife. Nice. Right. So, palette knives are actually pretty, like, thin, um, in, like, uh, thickness-wise. So I'm, I'm thinking, um, we can use that in here. And we can shove it between the keys to get the, um, what was it, a key out? And we're being very smart now. I feel like we've already discovered this, but Fukuroi, look, there's something in there. Something small was firmly jammed between two of the keys on the piano. It seemed to have been wedged in with tremendous force, making it impossible to move either of the surrounding keys. Blah, 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 blah. Definitely something in there. We needed something we could fit in the tiny space between the keys in order to pop it out. Hey, what about that palette knife we found in the art room? Try it. Kokoroi took the palette knife in hand and started digging between the keys of the piano with it in an attempt to dislodge whatever was stuck. It took a lot more effort than expected and created an unpleasant scraping sound that kind of hurt my ears, but ultimately... Alright, I got it. It's a key. Totally different shape and size than the one we used to open the art room, too. Fukuroi handed me the small key, which I immediately pocketed. I bet you it's for the cabinet. It's locked. Let's try using the key we found in the piano. The key turned without any resistance, and the heavy glass door opened right up. Oh, easy. All of this is just like step by step by step. Boom, 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 boom. Easy peasy. I removed the rectangular box from inside and marveled at the feel of the wood. It was made of polonia, making it smooth and lightweight. Let's have a look inside, shall we? It doesn't seem dangerous or anything. I uh, hope you just didn't jinx us. I wouldn't worry. Even if there's a bomb in there, I'm sure you'd be able to handle it just fine. It's like got so much faith in her, it's so cute. Isn't that supposed to be the girl's line? Look at him all fleshy. I couldn't believe I just laughed. I guess Fukuroi's overtly serious, deadpan reactions had become a source of strength for me. I can't even describe how grateful I was just to have him there. He was like a pillar of strength. With that in mind, I fearlessly opened the Polona box. Inside, wrapped in silk, was a small wooden board inked with calligraphy. What is this? It looks like the kind of thing you'd find at somebody's grave. That's exactly what it is. It's a wooden grave tag, a kind of protective charm. It's the sort of thing they burn at Buddhist cedar sick ceremonies. There's a lot of. I wasn't particularly well versed in Buddhist practices, but in a place like this, any sort of protective charm seemed like a good item to have. Okay, so what do we use the protective charm for then? Hmm. I don't know. I'm lost now. I use confusion. I mean, I 
Could we use it in the reference room? I thought the reference room was like locked or something. No. Yeah. Um, what about the girls' room? Can we use it in there? Can we, like, remove the protective charms from the door and then use the protective charm there? Or are we supposed to go back to that ghost and, like, get rid of him or something? The atmosphere feels heavier here than it does anywhere else. And the door is covered in protective charms. It seems to be shut up tight. It's not even locked. It just won't open. Maybe we can use that grave tab we found to get inside. Okay, I'm just gonna give it a good old save here. Alright, um, try it. The writing on these paper charms really does look pretty similar to the writing on the grave tag, but what are we supposed to do with it? Maybe try chucking it at the seals? <laughs> Sounds like a good way to get cursed. How about I just set it on the ground nearby instead? Fukuroi did exactly that, and after only a few moments, there was a notable change in the air. Then, all of a sudden, the grave tag emitted a bright blue light, and the door was engulfed in flames. Crap, the whole building will burn down. No, wait, look. I'd already turned to run, but at Fukuro's urging, I turned back. And I have to admit, what I saw defied my expectations. And explanations as well. The flames weren't actually engulfing the door, but rather just the protective paper charms affixed to it. The door, the wall, and the floor were untouched. After several seconds of burning, the paper charms were completely vaporized and the flames dutifully vanished as if they were never even there. Right. We've read that, haven't we? So let's, let's go. Let's just go in. The protected charms are gone. The girls' restroom door now stands wide open. Let me in. I'll put her in there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, is it just one? In the last game, each stall had like a dead body in it. It sinks it like completely. The water in the basin is brown and thick. The drain must be completely stopped up. Yuck. Blech. Blech. Gross. It's locked from the inside. It won't open. It's locked from the inside, it won't open. There's a tiny hole in the door. What's this? Maybe we can see inside from here. Big beak. Maybe we can see what's in there from this hole. Mitsuki, come on. I put my eye up to the hole and saw the telltale glint of another eye staring back at me from within. What is it? Somebody in there was looking back at me. What? That can't be. You don't see any feet along the bottom of the stall, right? Let me have a look. Fukuroi ducked down and peeked in through the hole, exactly as I had. Oh. He died. Fukuroi, what happened? Are you alright? Fukuroi, no, no, you're, you're choking, right? Fukuroi fell onto his side, and as soon as I could see his face, I noticed that his right glasses lens was cracked, and his right eye was bloody. 
On closer inspection, I noticed a round hole in the lens, as if a small stick or a fat needle had been instantaneously driven through it deep into his eye. Fukuroi, Fukuroi, please, stay with me. There was no hint of a response. He just kept subtly convulsing, as if he'd been electrocuted. How had this happened? What was going on? Boys aren't allowed in the girls' room. Who? What? What did you do? The stall door opened, revealing a little girl with an eerie blue glow about her. She looked to be around grade school age, a fifth or a sixth grader maybe. One of her eyes had been completely pulverized, but her face showed no indication of pain, rather it had a certain stoic quality to it. It was unreadable. Most disturbing of all, however, was the object she held in her right hand. It was an awl or an ice pick or some such thing, with a bloody dripping blade. Are you the one who let that boy in here? Wait, I... Before I even had a chance to answer, the girl leaped from the stall with blinding speed. <sighs> Second death. That's not allowed. Reacting as quickly as I could, I threw an arm in front of my face and almost immediately felt the ice pick blade pierce right into it. Not just once, but twice. Three times. It dug deep into my arm, my palm, my shoulder. Stop. Stop it. It hurts. I had to run. But she wasn't about to let me. She just quietly kept hacking away, working her way up and down the entire length of my arm. Bit by bit, my skin and flesh was chipped away until finally the ice pick completely penetrated my palm and began boring into my cheek. Eventually, my ear was hacked apart, and then I was scalped so thoroughly that I could hear the sound of my skin peeling away with my remaining ear. Blah. There was nothing in the world but pain at this point. I couldn't focus on anything else if I'd wanted to. My vision was blank. And I honestly couldn't tell if it's because I had my eyes closed or if I simply didn't have eyes anymore. I only knew for sure that I was still being hacked apart because I could hear it. The pain gave no indication, as it was already omnipresent. I begged for mercy, several times in vain, before I finally just started praying that this agony would come to an end. God, please. I'll endure whatever trials lie ahead with open arms if you'll just save me now. I beg of you, please, make it stop. <laughs> like, I mean, obviously I knew that that was a bad choice because I, you know, saved. <laughs> but still, you know, it, it can be a little interesting to see how these things work out, though. Alright, so I guess the the choice is not to peek and to leave the bathroom? Because I assume that that's what we're meant to use the um, grave tag for. Okay, don't do it. <laughs> There must be some purpose to this hole. I wonder... Oh! Alright. Uh, <laughs> Insert the wind-up key. Working on a hunch, I took the wind-up key from my pocket and tried sticking it in the hole. Surprisingly, it was a perfect fit. I then tried turning it, and with just a little bit of force, it spun 180 degrees to the right and produced a loud click. I guess it wasn't for a wind-up key. I guess it wasn't for a wind-up toy after all, then. It seems like I flipped some kind of switch. switch? 
A switch? Doesn't seem like anything changed though. Wait, look at the hole. As if on cue, a single hairline stream of blood began oozing out from behind the wind-up key. It slowly wended its way down the door and formed a gloopy, gloopy, gloopy puddle at its base. The whole room then filled with a pungent odour all at once. The smell seems... Oh, it's nothing. Another earthquake? I like doing like first game type nonsense. I think it's over. That scared the crap out of me. This old building is run down enough. There's no telling when it will just up and collapse. Yeah, we need to hurry up and find a way out of here. Alright, so... What? I just... Leave now? Where do I go? All of this should be like reworked, shouldn't it? Because of the earthquake? So do I just... I come over here. Is would like the reference room be opened up? Ah. Oh. <laughs> hey, is it just me, or was there a gap in the floor here before? Maybe the earthquake shifted things around, though you'd expect there to be much more gaps after an earthquake, not fewer. There's definitely something really wrong with this place. Hmm, the music started to pick up. Just a little bit concerning. Are we gonna find Kurosaki at any point? Is this like... No, still not. Alright, so... Let me head back down this way then. Hmm. It's unlocked. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Is there anything new in here? Hmm. Doesn't look like it. Let's head downstairs. Alright, so what? There's a staff room. We couldn't get into the boys' room before, right, because of, um, was it just blockages, or was it like a hole in the floor? Hmm. The exit door is rattling with the rain and wind, and seems like a perfectly normal, perfectly openable door now. Ah, uh, Fukuroi, look, I think we can get outside. Oh, we switch back to Morishige, okay. Mayu, are you in here? No luck. Oh, Mayu, where could you be? Another dead body. What in the world is going on in this school? Mayu mustn't be left by herself in a horrible place like this. 
I hope she's at least with Miss Yui or Mochita. Oh, <laughs> music's gotten a bit excited. <laughs> So I'm playing as... Whoa! What is happening here? It's a cult that's only just started to decay. Seems to be a junior high school girl. And from the looks of it, she was cut completely in half using some sort of edged instrument. Don't pretend that you think it's bad. Like, how awful is this? He doesn't actually give a crap, though. How awful. To cut someone in two, spine and all, it would take the finest katana to pull that off. Either that, or some form of machinery. The blood spray is primarily on this side, so I guess she was attacked from the front. Hmm? What's this? I noticed a notebook partially jutting out from my pocket. It was one of those cat-themed spiral notebooks. That's all the rage with teenagers these days. There may be information in here relevant to escaping this hell. I apologize for the intrusion, miss, but I feel I must take a look. I have no idea why we've been trapped here, but at least we're all here together. Mr. Goto's presence makes us all feel a little bit more at ease. Without an adult around, I don't think we could handle any of this. Mr. Goto seems even more anxious than we are. He says he'll make sure we all get home safely, but his temper just keeps getting worse. He's usually so cool, but lately he's just gotten kind of scary. Hiroko, Arisa, and the others are really getting fed up with him. Mr. Koto is so unfair. He keeps playing favorites with Hiroko. That was the last of our food, too. And I'm the one who stopped Hiroko and Norika from fighting. Mr. Koto is dead. <laughs> No help here, it seems. Aren't there any other clues to be found? Hey, you. Got any information for me? <laughs> Talking to corpses. I must be losing my mind. <laughs> this lost a long time ago. <laughs> How strange, though, that I can come face to face with the dead now and not bat an eye. Perhaps my sense of fear has gone numb. <laughs> Up until not long ago, this girl was just like me, breathing, thinking, living her life. But look at her now, nothing but a foul-smelling pile of meat. She has such a pretty face, but before long, that face is just going to rot, and not a soul will ever want to look at her again. Hey, you there. What are you doing? Is that Taguchi? Uh, nothing of substance. Just trying to find clues as to my situation here. Oh, alright then. I just heard a voice over here and it got me wondering. Wasn't there a Shogo somewhere, like a mention of that name? Like, just like not too long ago. 
Maybe it was like a note from like Kibiki or something. Shogo Takuchi is the name. As you can see, I'm a cameraman. Though, not the artistic kind who's planning on hitting the indie film circuits or anything. I came here to get footage for a special report, but I got separated from my boss along the way. How about you? I got myself lost in the school building, and then presently searching for a friend. Uh oh, you don't mean that girl on the ground over there, do you? Ah, uh, no, I've never met her before. Phew, that's good. Well, kind of, I guess. Anyway, may I ask your name? And the name of the friend you're looking for too while I'm at it. Morishige Sakutaro desu. Sagashiteru no wa onna no ko de Suzumoto Mayu. Kogara de yoku warau akarui ko nan desu ga? I'm Sakutaro Morishige, and the girl I'm looking for is named Mayu Suzumoto. She's short, smiles a lot, and has a generally cheerful countenance, really. Suzumoto. Suzumoto, ne. Suzumoto. Suzumoto. The cameraman named Toguchi suddenly flipped out the LCD screen on his camcorder and began rewinding through footage. Uh, what are you doing? Well, I don't want to sound crass, but I'm checking through the footage I've captured since coming here to see if her name comes up at all. I intend to file a police report when I get back, so I've been gathering information on all the dead kids I've found in here, like from their name tags. Bite your tongue. Don't say such things. Mayu is all right. I know she is. Oh, uh, yeah, sorry, sorry. If it makes you feel any better, I don't see anyone named Suzumoto in any of my footage. And, may I say, you're really very brave. Oh? Well, whether you're looking for a friend or not, you really seem to put your all into searching that body, you know. You're the one taking video of corpses. <laughs> well, being a cameraman is kind of a strange thing that way. As long as I'm looking at them through a finder, it's all just business to me. But if I try to look at them with my bare eyes, I freeze up. There's a famous story about a battlefield cameraman whose camera broke while he was out on the job, and he literally started crying like a baby. <laughs> I see. That makes sense. You're not too interested in any of this, are you? I do have a tendency to run my mouth off sometimes. Naho is always scolding me for that. And I am going to end the episode there. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you have a um, lovely day. Make sure to like and subscribe. Uh, ring the bell if you enjoyed the episode. And you can be notified whenever I upload again. Interact with me in the comments down below. And if it's a comment I can reply to, I will reply to it. And I'll see you all next time. Bye for now.